In this video, we take you guys all over Argentina and Chile with us, traveling by bus and by boat and on foot, doing some of the most famous hikes in the world. Behind me is Mount Fitzroy, and even visiting the mountains that the Patagonia logo was based on. We had some hiccups as well, but overall, it blew away all our expectations, and we definitely hope to come back here in the future. So let's get on with the video. What's up you guys? Welcome to Patagonia. This is Puerto Natales, Chile. And here we are on the beautiful port that the city is named after. This is day one of 13 of our trip uh, in one of the most sought after places in the world for landscape photography. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly why that is. So let's have a good trip. Here we go. So we picked up a rental car. We decided a good use of our rest day would be to drive out to Torres del Paine National Park and take pictures of some of the most famous views in Chile. Uh, we wouldn't see these views otherwise, so I think it's really important to just go see them, shoot them today. I'm not sure if I told you guys, but it's always windy here, so sorry if this audio sucks. But we got into the park. Uh, we got to the viewpoint that I've been looking forward to for five years. It turns out it's closed because people go to it much, which <laughs> I guess is a sign to me I probably shouldn't shoot the overshot viewpoint. So here we are in the view that I was going to take photos of. And you see this nice red hotel, a potential lunch spot. So we're going to take some photos here, grab some lunch. So this is definitely not the food I was expecting to get at a backcountry hut, but this is it full spread hamburger soup fries everything you would want and it's only 19 bucks us so i feel this is a really good deal especially considering how far from civilization we are now i'm very happy with this let's see at this point in the trip we've been traveling around patagonia for only half a day we enjoyed our lunch at Hosteria Pejo, but now it's time to get back in the car and see other parts of Torres del Pine National Park. A short drive up the road, we ended up seeing guanacos, which are part of the llama family and only exist here in South America. We also saw this crazy bird thing that was eating a guanaco's skull, which is crazy. Uh, so we continued on thinking about all these weird experiences and driving around and taking photos of the amazing scenery. All in all, this was a pretty good use of a day, especially considering we were supposed to just hang out in Puerto Natales all day. So yeah, this was way better than that. Anyways, on to Argentina tomorrow. Here we are in the beautiful El Sheltan, Argentina. Behind me is Mount Fitzroy. This is the mountain on the logo for the Patagonia brand, which I've been looking forward to seeing forever. And it is so much bigger than they tell you about, so. I'm beyond excited to explore here and see what this town has to offer. For whatever reason, the audio did not work out very well on this clip, but I'm just telling a story about how all the toilets were broken on the eight hour bus ride to get to El Chalten. And now it's 3.30 in the morning and we're about to start the sunrise hike to go see the mountain that happens to be in the Patagonia logo. So wish us luck. Here we go. So we've been hiking for about two hours now. We're eight kilometers in. And even though it's an hour before sunrise, you can still see the peaks are fully lit up. I had no idea that could even happen an hour before sunrise. I thought it'd be dark out still. So we're not going to get to the lake for sunrise. So I think we'll stick right here, take some photos over this valley full of red trees. And then once we're done with that and happy with that, we'll continue on up.
As you can see, we definitely did not make it up to the lake, but that's okay because we had some amazing photos at this beautiful little valley and went back down to town. As you can see here, we're back down in El Shal 10, but the reason we're not vlogging is because the wind is just so crazy. Like every time you get the camera out, all you hear in the mic is wind noise. So here's El Shal 10 in the daytime. Absolutely beautiful little town. So our hotel room had a little bit of flooding, unfortunately. And so a bit of our gear got wet and then the hotel guy came by and he said, I got another hotel for you. So we're on our way to the other hotel. How you feeling, Gav? Pretty good. Good? Oh yeah. I'm feeling good. Time to, time to impromptly check out a new hotel. The hotel room we were staying in had never seen the kind of rain that it had seen while we were staying there. This is because it was built in the summer and we were staying there in the fall, the first time when weather arrives in El Shal 10. So we don't hold it against the hotel owner at all. In fact, they set us up with a new hotel room down the street and we tucked in for the night and on the next day, we're on our way to El Calafate. So that last sunrise was absolutely amazing. But when we came back down, I started feeling a little bit sick. And so took a couple days off and then our hotel room flooded. <laughs> so we were dealing with all sorts of problems. So there's been about a two or three day pause in between now and that last sunrise. But anyway, we're back at it and we're in the taxi cab heading from El Calafate out to Perito Moreno Glacier, which I am sure is gonna be a life highlight. Everyone down here says, it's the highlight of their Patagonian trip, so we're gonna go investigate, <laughs> see what they're talking about. And we're checking out the Perito Moreno Glacier, which you may see just a glimpse of it behind me. We haven't quite walked up to it yet, but we're gonna do that now. Apparently this glacier is 30 kilometers long, but from this viewpoint, you can only see 14 kilometers of it. So the scale of this thing's astonishing. So this bad boy right here is running a time lapse. Hopefully it looks good, but the wind's blowing that way. And if the camera blows that way, then it's gonna go down the hill to the glacier, which isn't good. So we want it to, if it's gonna fall, we want it to fall this way. So we got the backpack, the carabiner, camera strap, a little bit of tension, just enough tension to keep it from not going that way. Hopefully it works. just over halfway through the trip now but the highlight of the trip starts now it's uh the w trek so we're doing at least a portion of the w trek if not the w trek itself and i just wanted to show you guys a bit of the stuff i'm bringing on the trek less than one pound camp chair garbage bag to put food garbage in two rain covers here one for the big bag one for the camera bag camp pillow first aid kit microfiber towel this is called tenacious tape it's a patch up holes and down jackets Ziploc bag, a paracord, a wool winter hat. It's a water filter bag. You just put water in here and you can just drink out of it through this nozzle and it's already fully filtered. Sleeping mat, smallest sleeping bag because I got to fit all this other crap. Uh, basic medicine, stove gas, $30 stove, some organization stuff. That's pretty much all my gear. I'm all ready to go. Just got off the three hour long bus ride to Torres del Paine National Park. We gotta hop on this boat behind me here. It's about 35 minutes. It's gonna take us to Refugio Pine Grande, which we are at for one night. And we got three more nights after that. So let's grab our stuff and get on the boat. to see the photos and the videos. But now we take our bags and we go check in, set up our tent for a day of hiking around. 
Shortly after recording that clip, the wind picked up like crazy. It was a full on storm. And so we had nothing else to really do for 15 hours, except to eat dinner and hang out in the tent. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'd have to be able to unhinge my jaw if I wanted to eat that. <laughs> Super realistic moment in the back country here is we've got nothing to do and it's rainy and windy out and uh, <laughs> there's still like 17 hours until we need to leave here. And it's gonna be dark for 13 of those hours. So we really got nothing going on. So all we gotta do is chill. But Gav has phone games and I don't, so I'm not playing anything. Just recording clips about how I have nothing to do. Five minutes ago we were shooting sunrise. It was looking like it was gonna be a nice pink sunrise and then immediately out of nowhere this came in. I think we're just getting clipped with a quarter of it though, so maybe it'll last 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Weather said full uh, sun all day till Wednesday. It's Monday today. We will survive. It was perfectly clear and it looked like sunrise was just about to happen and then within 30 seconds the mountain disappeared, snow came in, we didn't even have our shells on at the time and just started peppering us with snow, getting us all wet and that lasted about 20 minutes and so the mountain is just starting to reappear after disappearing into the fog and the snow so we're going to take some photos of it and then pack up and be on our way to Refugio Grey which is a three and a half hour hike and 11 kilometers. It's going to be a good day. and then another storm came in. This is not what the weather forecast said today. But I'm still getting some really epic shots. Golden light coming across the mountains, lighting up the snow as it comes over the ridge, blue water below. Really, really cool scene. We got all the shots we could hope to get for this morning. We got a 10 minute hike back to camp and then we got like five or 10 minutes and pack up before they charge us for a second night. So we gotta go quick. Get this thing packed up, get on out of here, get that 12K hike to Refugio Grey going. This is how you dry out a tent point. Here we are at the Glacier Gray Lookout. This is the end of our first day, our first full day on the trail. So we're just about to go into our second night. I think we'll even come back here for sunrise tomorrow as well. We've been getting so many cool photos that I can't wait to show you guys. We're gonna take even more right now. And then we're gonna wrap up the day, go tuck into the sleeping bag, wake up in the morning, and do it all again tomorrow. I actually smashed my polarizer second day of the trip, but whatever, it's got a crack down the middle. I've been using it basically every shoot since. Just shooting at like f2.8 so I don't see it. <laughs> Adds character. Yeah. Action. So we're just wrapping up sunrise here at the beautiful Glacier Gray. This is Glacier Gray viewpoint. This, it feels like a sentimental spot to me. Uh, I think it's just that hard to get to and that beautiful. But we have to leave. We have other spots we want to see. There's a suspension bridge that overlooks the glacier, which would be really amazing. I've heard it's kind of extreme, so <laughs> I'm interested to see just how extreme it is. So we're going to put the cameras away, get the backpacks on, and get into sort of a hiking rhythm so we can get there in time, shoot it, have some lunch, and turn around and go back. That looks badass. <laughs> To 
everyone who said the suspension bridges would be pretty extreme. I definitely see where you're coming from, but honestly I was blown away by how safe they were. Cables tied into the mountain, keeping it super sturdy. And the views are absolutely spectacular overlooking the glacier. I haven't seen something like this anywhere else in the world. Love these bridges. So we made it here to the second suspension bridge. This is on the Lago Gray side of Torres del Pine National Park. A four kilometer hike from Refugio Gray, which took us like an hour and a half. And it's absolutely spectacular when you walk across it. You see amazing views of Glacier Gray. And so we're really hungry. It's like noon. So we're gonna hike another 500 meters to another amazing lookout, eat lunch, and show you even more spectacular views. So we've just been setting up here at this amazing view of Glacier Gray for about an hour eating lunch, just enjoying the view. I was also gonna say, I think this is the most remote spot either me nor my filmmaker Gav have ever been because it's a 20 kilometer walk from a trailhead and the trailhead you can only access by boat, which is a 35 minute boat ride from town, which is a three hour bus ride, which is a three hour bus ride from a bigger town, which has an airport. But to get to that airport, you have to take four flights to get here from where we came from, which is Vancouver, Canada. So yeah, all in all, very remote spot, uh, but I'd say definitely worth it and very glad we came. This sort of is the end of the trip or this is where we start ending the trip. From here, we're only going home. Feels kind of bittersweet, honestly. Like I don't want to end, but we have to. So we'll end, we'll, we'll end it here. We'll turn around here and we'll go back. I, I really hope to come back one day. Here we are just about to leave Pina Grande, our very final day in the backcountry. Honestly, do not want to leave at all, but duty calls back at home. So thankful this trip happened and so thankful for this final sunrise. I'd say this is the best sunrise, the best light we've had of the whole trip. As you can probably tell by the mist I'm breathing out that's getting illuminated by the sun. Uh, I, yeah, I feel content. I feel good about the trip. This is one of the wildest places in the world I've ever been. You're gonna see me back here. That's a fact. And I hope I see you guys back here too. Actually making a pile of snow on the ground. <laughs>